Truth Seeker and or its affiliates are not responsible for any strange phenomena that may occur during or after listening to this podcast, which may include the following. Heightened senses of awareness, psychic abilities, UFO sightings, alien contact, time loss, out-of-body experiences, ringing in the ears, ESP, lucid dreaming, increased synchronicities, astral projection, telepathy, stronger intuition, levitation, miraculous healings, and or remote viewing. Please be advised to listen at your own discretion. gentlemen boys and girls i'm your host truth seeker this is the truth seeker podcast excited delighted to be with you guys again today we got an awesome show planned for you why today is world ufo day so yeah we get one day a year to really go into this topic and where we're honored for our ufo encounters and experiences and we're acknowledged by the rest of the world one day this is us this is our day baby we're gonna make it count um, I want to hear about your UFO encounters in the chat, if you've had any, um, if you believe in them. Do you believe? I had a buddy of mine text me yesterday, shout out to David McHenry, text me yesterday. He watched the Bob Lazar interview with Joe Rogan. Uh, Bob Lazar just put out a documentary on Netflix about his UFO investigations and experiences and stuff like that. And uh, he said, Derek, I'm still not a believer. Well, um, I don't know what, what is, what's it going to take. Usually it's someone having their own encounter, someone seeing uh, anomalies in the night sky, seeing lights that are outside of our atmosphere flying and you're staring at it and you're saying, well, I think that's a satellite. It's a satellite, right? You see them all the time. looks like a little piece of rice going across the night sky, but all of a sudden it stops on a dime. Wow. What is that? What? I didn't know they could stop. They stop, then they change directions, and then another one comes out of it and goes another direction, and then your mind's blown, and then it leads you to documentaries, then it leads you to Google UFOs, and you start Googling the work of maybe Dr. Stephen Greer, maybe um, James Gilliland, like myself, David Wilcock, and you start finding this stuff, and you start going down the rabbit holes, and uh, and then you start recording rap music about ufos and having your own personal encounters and experiences and going out and stargazing and just having your mind blown that's what we're talking about happy world ufo day everyone we're going to get it in today's guest is todd medina we're going to talk about his experiences here in a little bit and how it relates back to spirituality um but first i can't go any further without saying a huge thank you to all the Patreon supporters, you guys are the enablers who enable me to continue to keep going and do this uh, to the extent that I'm able to do it and greater. So um, if you want to support, head on over to patreon.com backslash truthseeker. There's many different levels of giving anywhere from $100 a month to $1 a month. And you get perks for every level. We have uh, Thursday uh, evening School of the Mystics. We have the Sunday morning seer class. You get all of my music. Everything that we talk about on this podcast, the UFOs, the spirituality, 
Christ consciousness, Jesus, like all of this stuff, it's in the music. So if you haven't experienced that, make sure you go check out my music. I just put out a new album yesterday. It's an EP entitled the ESP EP, Extra Sensory Perception. So going into some of the details about how the mind works and how we hear perceive and receive the voices the impressions empathy all of that stuff and how it works together within our spirituality and a lot of people are tapping into these abilities and don't even know it and i did an album uh, on that if you want to get access to that my entire discography there's 200 plus songs all available at my patreon um, I want to give a shout out to some of the latest patrons within the last week or so. Shout out to Dylan Mason. Shout out to you, brother. Thank you for coming on board. Um, shout out to a uh, special thank you for the Diamond Body supporters here. Sonny Horath, bless you, my brother. Thank you for believing in my work. And um, Adam Brink, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much. And so uh, there's a bunch of new stuff that I'm just dumping over there on, on Patreon, some courses that I'm getting ready to release. Uh, almost done with two books that I'm writing. I've just been knocking that stuff out. All of it's going to be available. So patreon.com backslash truth seeker. That's out of the way. Today's guest, again, uh, you may know him from such places as your local Facebook group, Todd Medina. Welcome to the podcast, my brother. What's going on, man? Just stepped bright and early in uh, Hawaii, five o'clock in the morning, just to meet with you. <laughs> it's five o'clock somewhere, bro. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> in Hawaii, I'm actually. I'm, yeah, I'm good. I'm very good. I'm honored to be here. Getting up at honored. five in the morning. You know, there's some things I like to wake up early when I can, you know, 4.30, 5.30 uh, to get up and start writing, beat the family up, beat the sun up even. You say you're looking out the window yeah. and it's just black, right? Um, yeah. I, you, and, and people are like, no, ain't no way I'm waking up that early. And so we wake up early on the weekends and go shoot basketball with some, some brothers and uh, people are like, no, I'm sleeping in. And uh, I just I just remember going back to my job like I used to have to get up at 1.30 a.m. to go into a job that I hated, that I loathed, that I despised. Right. But I did it. I got up at 1.30, 2.30 in the morning to get up and go to work. And I did it. I was very tired. Um, so now when it comes to doing something that you love, getting up at five, five o'clock in the morning, 4.30, whatever, it's no thing. You get up and you're able to do this for, for a living and you love it. Right. So you, yeah. you, you, you've spent the majority of your life getting up, doing things that you hate it. Why not right. be able to do it and, and wake up, start the day early to do something you love and to uh, bring something to the table. Right. That's right. That's right on, man. Absolutely. I don't mind that at all. I'm, I've been looking forward to this. For sure, man. Um, so again, like I said, world UFO day, day I want to talk about UFOs, light beings, it all ties in, right? It doesn't have yeah. to specifically be about that, but it has something to do with the the uh, the consciousness of the planet, the greater good yeah. of humanity, uh, what these things are that are that are going on in our night sky. That if you want to, you can go out there and have your own encounters. There's uh, CE5 initiatives, contact of the fifth kind, where you actually go out and make contact yourself. Um, I tie it into the angelic and all of that stuff. It's the same thing for me. What, what does um b b before we get into your experiences, just kind of give some people just a little bit of background, just about who you are and what you bring to the table. Well, I'm involved. I'm a co-creator of a group uh, or an energy. I don't call it a group or an organization. It's an energy called Stology. Stology uh, is something that was created uh, essentially in the non-physical. Uh, and this I put together. Uh, you know, we put together after experience a lot of things physical non-physical um some of the stuff that you're going to bring up and so on but, but but basically i would put it to you this way that uh that uh my beloved partner my wife and i had an experience probably two months ago where we were uh consciously every night when we go to bed we put our palms together and we see what happens right and so we uh we went into what I would call a monad of about 22 other people. We were pulled in. We were pulled in consciously for the first time in 60 years, as we were told. I'm 57. Uh, we were pulled into this monad. We were told that we, we were conscious 60 years ago when we made the decision to come down here and do the work that we're doing and incarnate, actually incarnate. Uh, point being is that that led me to understand that this uh, energy called Sology was created before I was born physically. 
And, uh, and basically, uh, there's some proof of that. There's some validation. There's some synchronicity. For instance, I was given uh, the name Sology on her birthday in 2012, and I wouldn't meet her till 2015. Uh, that, that energy or the, the name was given to me by the consciousness or the face of the universe, Archangel Michael, a face of the universe. I don't know how all that stuff works either, you know. Um, but basically, uh, Sology is an energy that's grown over eight years. Um, we've done a lot of different things, but our primary focus is broadcasting probably about three shows a day, pretty much every day. Um, we've done about 1,200 shows to date, uh, probably 3,500 total productions that have involved video. Um, and... Uh, we talk to people all over the world uh, about their experiences, uh, our belief, our understanding. Uh, as a result of it is that the highest transmissions, downloads, um, channelings come from conversations such as this, where we speak as two conscious divine beings, open, vulnerable, raw, real, and talk about everything, including what we're going to talk about today. Man, that's so powerful. And uh, I see the numbers behind it, right? That's always good. There's a lot of people who are just starting out and they'll they'll live stream and they got, you know, one or two people watching and they just kind of feel like ah, nobody's really listening. And it's kind of a, a place that you have to kind of start out of from like consistency, making sure that this is not just what you want to do, but maybe this is what you're called to do. And you're doing this in, for a reason, sharing the knowledge and information. And there's something about it because the information resonates with people. Like there's always numbers when you go live. I see how many people watch your episodes. They're gonna, you know what I'm saying, reshare the conversations. Uh, it's touching a lot of people. That lets you know that, I don't think you've convinced anybody of anything, but you're letting and people are, they've had their own encounters. And yeah. essentially what you're doing is just vocalizing their experiences. And now they found like this uh, common ground with you and they believe in, in the message and, and it's kind of just this big network, it seems like, man. Talk a little bit about the power of networking and coming together with other people to do that. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, you know, uh, we we have hard numbers because we're really only represented at this point on YouTube and Facebook. Nothing against those matrix constricting vehicles because God bless them, you know. But because of our inability to gather all the metrics, which is primary a Facebook issue. Uh, I can only go with these numbers. We have 65,000, uh, which I'd say about 60 to 65% of the people are engaged every week, which is a lot. Uh, we're talking 40,000 engagements of the people that are, that are documented as, as, as following. But there's, there are some metrics that I've had, had a chance to get a hold of, and then they've been taken away, which tells me we probably reached about a million and a half people a week, of which about 25% engage us. So there's a lot of people coming through the door uh, as far as the networking goes. I mean, if you look at the literal phys physicality of it, if you look at the human, I need proof part of it, uh, you'd have to stick with the numbers I just gave you. If you look at the, uh, the etherical, the non-physical, uh, to include what I've received, information I've received and such, um, the network is huge. Uh, yeah. There's been many, many groups that have... Um, I, I don't want to say been born, but maybe been been uh, born out of the creativity and energy of Sology. There's been shows, uh, channels that have been spawned by it. And as I understand it in my communication with the universe, this is the point. This is the objective. It's not about notoriety. It's not about, uh, you know, fame, credit, fortune, and all that. It's about getting the word out. And I think what you're saying is a very good point. We don't have a dogma at Stology. We don't have a doctrine. Uh, it's all about the truth. And everybody's truth is relevant. Uh, but you know how the truth is. What's true today, you can wake up tomorrow and there's a, high, there's a higher truth. It doesn't make you a liar or the universe a liar. It just means there's a higher truth. So yep. I'm a real big proponent uh, of the spontaneous, intuitive, creative, imaginative, and courageous. And, and that means in the moment, in the moment. Uh, is is really where our most powerful opportunities uh, to fulfill our potential uh, and to create uh, further expand this universe is, is is in the raw and the real, especially in this time. 
in this time and in space that we're all in because regardless of what you follow or what you believe or don't believe, we're in a very special time, very, very special time. And uh, the last thing I'll say about that is uh, I think there's, I think we're, we're at a point where the consciousness has reached that we can stop looking at all the sensationalism and all the conspiratorial stuff. I'm not saying it doesn't happen or didn't happen, Yeah. but uh, we are the power. Yeah. We are the power. And so we need to stop giving it away. That may sound like preaching, but we have the power. <laughs> we are divine human beings and there ain't nothing can stand in our way unless we hand that power over. And I don't care if it's physical or non-physical, uh, interdimensional, multidimensional, no dimensional, uh, whatever. You know, so thank you for letting me share that. Yeah, yeah. For sure, man. I know we talked a little bit about that when I was on your um uh... Uh, show a couple couple weeks ago and uh, we talked a little bit about that it's like I'm not saying that that stuff doesn't exist but you get you have to I mean you only have 24 hours in a day right and you have to pick and choose what you want to give your time and attention yeah. to and uh and there's I think there's levels to this as well you know starting out when the, the truth movement you know all the other uh, fellow truth seekers out there like sometimes it is the government stuff sometimes it is the conspiracy theories that wake people up they find yeah. a conspiracy theory that pulls them down the rabbit hole and then they find a lot more that tie into it and then it just becomes overwhelming. And some people have actually dedicated their life to it and that's cool if that's what's called them. Yeah. But for a lot of us, I feel like it's levels, especially when it comes to the government or politics or whatever. You may get in through that, but then like I know people who are like um, doing protest and marching and all that stuff and like you usually find out that, hey, this it's not really working what seems to be working instead of shaking my fist at parliament shaking my fist at the government and at trump and all of these people doesn't really work and th these marches aren't working what is working is when i quit trying to change the world but i start with myself let me change myself let that expand out to my family my friends let that expand out to their families and their friends and essentially it goes back to the scriptures and Jesus said like once you get the holy spirit you start at uh was it um uh Jerusalem Sumeria and then the world you start at home you branch yeah. out a little bit further and then it has a worldwide effect so instead of trying to change everybody else start with yourself spiritually morally consciously and then in in, in the midst of that you're you're changing the world Right. I agree 100 uh, percent. You start with the circles closest to you, you know, and in the circles I run in, people talk a lot about divine marriage, uh, divine union within yourself, where you marry the masculine and feminine within yourself. I mean, there's uh, a lot to be said for that. That's been written about for thousands and thousands of years. But anything that's been written, I have to question. And, you know, everyone's got to make up their own mind. But, yeah, aside from uh, any uh any affinities people have for this version or that version or this version or that version. Uh, the bottom line is it's about self-reliance. Uh, we are, to, to quote from the Bible, made in the image. Uh, show me uh, a progeny uh, in the universe, uh, a child in the universe uh, that isn't made in the image of their parent. You know, I mean, so why, you know, we either accept our divinity or we don't accept our divinity. Uh, but I absolutely want to just say, with all respect, that, uh, yes, there's many people, many people that have been on your show uh, that are out there doing doing what they feel they need to be doing. And they did wake up a lot of people. They did uh, help a lot of people to discover their own, begin to discover their own spirituality, their own divinity, their own truth, uh, because I guess it's all the same thing. And so I think they should be commended, and as, as we all should be commended, for showing up here in this uh in hell's heaven as i call it uh, <laughs> because uh you know a lot of people talk about free will i think our free will the most important part of our free will was the one we exercised when we chose to come down here i think we chose to come down here i think we're also selected to come down here and you can call that from an angelic order a galactic order and all the above the known and not known i really don't know but uh but yeah i think big props to anyone and everyone who can uh, put as many frequencies together out there and create an ever expanding vibration. What I mean by that is get the camera out, turn on the audio, rap, dance, poetry, 
speak, commentate, whatever it may be. Put your truth out there from your heart and don't look back because other people will pick up on it. Their conscious mind may not get it, but their soul will hear it. And that's how we're kicking this uh, consciousness up around the world. That's what's up. I mean, that's light language anyway, because you're speaking to the soul of the person. Uh, yeah. Truth resonates. And from the, uh, you know what I'm saying, Jewish or uh, Kabbalistic standpoint, knowledge is, is light, light language, yeah. and uh, speaking that out. And it speaks to the soul of the person versus to the in, um, intellectual mind. It speaks to the soul. The first time I seen you, I think uh, you were actually doing music. You were going live and, and freestyling and, and singing and, and playing music <laughs> and all kind of stuff. And I remember those days. That's where I w w first seen you at, man. Talk a little bit about the music and stuff going live doing that. Well, I uh, when my journey started eight years ago, um, my world turned upside down like a lot of people's did. A lot of people that come on the show tell the same story, that have, that have successive traumas. Yep. Anyway, long story short, I went I went homeless by my own choice for two years, and uh, and I just went into a constant communion. Uh, I was given the name Sology, uh, and like I said, on my wife's birthday, but four years before I'd meet her, um, I started communicating with certain faces of the universe, six ascended masters, three spirit guides, and Jesus and Magdalene were the main ones. And I was told to write. So I just started writing. I had a little flip phone and I did that for two years. And I came off the street in about a year and a half. I did memes, you know, I did imagery, graphic, graphically altered images with the words written in it. I did about 1,200 of those. And then uh, one day I was told I was living in a house at this point and I was living in a townhouse. And I was told one day, um, uh, Soldier One Studios. And I'm like, what is that? And, and they're like, just go make a studio downstairs. So I did. So I've been writing a lot of prose and poetry. And uh, I just made it up as I went. You know, I I, uh, I would turn on some music and I would just start to recite. And then after about six months, I did uh, I did my first what I call Soul Speak music video. Uh, and, and then about six songs into it, I did a little rap. And then about 75, 80 songs later, there's all kinds of variety in there, but I like I like to all of them are one take, pretty much. There may be four or five of them, um, but it's not my main focus. I mean, I love it very much. Uh, I think everybody should find a creative outlet. Uh, I look at it this way: Sology is a network. Uh, each person is a spoke in the wheel. Each group, each show, and and Sology One Studios is my contribution my creative artistic uh, uh, contribution to Sology the network. Mm. Actually, I'm just one of one of the 8 billion, you know? Yeah. So, Man, yeah. that's awesome. Like I said, you've done, you said over 1200 shows now, podcast uh, discussions, whatever you want to call them, long form yeah. discussions, right? Yeah. They're not, they're not usually 30 minute episodes. They're usually pretty lengthy. Um, yeah. Consistency. It's a great word, right? Um, when I started being consistent with my music or being consistent with the podcast, right? It was sporadic for years. I'd do three episodes. I'd go study for two months and then stop for three. Yeah. Go study for another month, stop for six, do two episodes. Yeah. And it was just sporadic over the years until I was like, you know what? This is what I want to do. Um, now I go to my podcast page and... I mean, I make all the images. I got a really cool image of you that I made as well I saw that, for, for this, you know. <laughs> uh, I make all that stuff, and it takes time and effort, but it's consistency. Yeah. I can easily take your picture, throw it up there. Hey, this is the guy. Check it out. Mm -hmm. But I go into a lot of depth on that stuff, and I take take honor in, in, in the artwork and stuff. Now I just go to my podcast page, and I scroll down. And I'm not at 1,200. <laughs> I'm about 240 or something like that. I don't know. But <laughs> as I scroll down, I'm seeing all of these images and seeing these yeah. people's names yeah. and remembering, yeah. like, oh, my goodness, man. I've yeah. got an eclectic catalog now of beautiful conversations with people from all walks of life, all backgrounds. The same with my music. You know, I've yeah. got 200 songs. You, know, you got to wow. start somewhere. You got to stay consistent. Keep keep pouring into w what you believe in, and that's just a message for people, man. Whatever you believe in, whatever message uh, has been given to you, find a vehicle for that, and just be consistent. You know, stay stay with it. Um, the and and I always have to stress that because us as creatives, right? Us as being people who are very empathic and we're able to receive inspiration and things like that. I believe we're made in the image of that creator, right? And who is a creator 
in and of himself. He creates things. And so we're just like our father or we're just like our mother who creates. And so now we have this knack to create and we just want to create all this stuff. Right. But it's, you have to be focused. You have to like say, OK, this is my mission. This is what I'm going to do. And it's so easy to get sidetracked. Hey, let's do this. And you get sidetracked and you forget about the first thing that you were committed to. So returning to that and staying focused and staying consistent is the only way that you have a production and a, in a, a podcast and interviews where you can look at it now and you've done 1200 shows. And I, I do, I, I usually do two a week now and two I have weeks. some other stuff we do with the community as well, but I do two a week and I feel like that's a lot, you know, yeah. you do, <laughs> yeah. well, see, you do like I mean, three a day and I'm like, they, this is well, the third know, interview of the day. <laughs> the amazing, the, the amazing thing is, is that, um, so my wife came over, uh, like mid 2017 to check me out <laughs> basically she followed a higher guidance we, we've been seeing each other for a while, but she came a year later which would have been about a year ago about a year ago uh she came and we ended up getting uh going through a divine conscious union ceremony a marriage by u.s or uh, human standards but she took over the the kind of the producing role and uh she lines lines people up and it's it sounds very simple but it's not oh there's yeah symmet there's a symmetry yeah you know, know there's a lot of hey you know working to coordinate things but more than that there's a symmetry <clears throat> of the energy that's presented and so the interesting thing is and i just realized this because i remember when our 400 show happened and our 400 show happened when she came over uh last summer and uh I would have said we probably would have been at closer to 300 shows when she stepped in the door in, I believe, May of 2018 to hands-on uh, become uh, an equal force in what we were doing. And so that would mean that we did about 800 to 900 shows in the last 12 months. So that ought to tell you the kind of volume. But uh, all I have to do is show up <laughs> and get in the chair, <laughs> which, which, is, which is challenging at times, you know, uh, because of all of the things that are occurring energetically around the world and how that affects us. People can talk about plasma, of, of, I don't know all the, the terms, uh, photonic light, this and that. And, you know, I don't really give a, I don't care. Uh, I'm just to thine own self be true in my own space and, yeah. and uh, what you said earlier. But yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think, uh, I think the consistency helps a lot. It also helps a lot. Uh, I, I'm very blessed to be in a divine partnership, uh, you know, because when you have when you have one person that's receiving, I know you can relate to this. <clears throat> I know actually you can relate to both because I know your story because you told me your story. But, uh, you know, when you're one person and you're hearing things, you know, you're hearing things and you're seeing things, there's always that, hey, man, am I crazy? <laughs> Did I see that? You know, but when there's two people, yeah, and you're being addressed together. Mm -hmm. uh, then it becomes a little bit different, and then of course you get into venues or forums like this or like Sology, Soul Speaks 5D, and you start to actually that two or more becomes an exponential uh, explosion of what you referred to earlier, uh, truth. You know. Yeah, I, it, it helps, man. It really does, because. Um, <laughs> I think a lot of it starts by yourself, though. It's like the inner work, right? And then when mm -hmm. other people get to come in and share in that with you, it helps. And so it helps for me because, like, I listen to podcasts like Joe Rogan or some of the people talking about DMT and the third eye, DMT being released in the, in the brain, and you're imagining these things. Yeah. You're imagining them. Um, but then when two yeah. people are having the same encounter, like, hold on, how were we both – imagining yeah. the same thing that's happening you know what i'm saying yeah yeah so. and i and you know on that note and i and i love uh i love uh what we what you do what i do i i, I listen to joe rogan sometimes i'll listen to uh, other talk shows but i think as as far as uh any any certainty absolute and i'm just using this as an example uh DMT, uh, for example, uh, I don't think anybody knows what the hell they're looking at. Uh, the only thing that's important is what they know they're looking at. But I think yeah. that's a very good point, what you make. Uh, 
that if, if let's say, and I've done DMT, and uh, let's say that I imagine the whole thing. How do you explain to people who mm-hmm. go to bed every night, clasp their palms together through the direction and instruction from the higher aspects, the higher realms, God, God, a source, whatever you want to call it. Uh, how do you explain them having the same experience at the same time to include their audience, their sentience, mm-hmm. uh, the visuals, the, the whole nine yards? Uh, some she might see more than I do or, or vice versa. And we've still had, uh, obviously had experiences uh, on our own too, because both have been documented. Yeah. Uh, much, much of mine been documented. She was a little more secreted. Um, but uh, yeah, so how do you explain that? Yeah, that's, that's the, the beautiful thing, because it even ties into the UFO encounters and UFO experiences. So again, I'll listen to Joe Rogan, and they're talking about the UFO experiences. Oh, you're just having this uh, secretion of DMT to the pineal gland, and it's creating Ooh. this spiritual experience for you. Okay, that, that accounts for you, maybe. But what about all the other people experiencing the same thing with you? Um, even, I like to talk about this, though, this in there, Terrence McKenna, you know, talking about psilocybin mushrooms and psychedelics and things, and he says that uh, concerning the UFO community in the 70s, right, 70s, early 80s, uh, He said, what we in the drug community or the DMT psychedelics community have over the UFO community is we have repeatability. We can consume DMT, smoke ayahuasca, and then go and meet with these machine elves, if you will, uh, beings whenever we want. But you and the UFO community are just kind of left up to chance for the experience, right? This is something that Terrence McKenna said uh, back in the day, but now... We have something because of the work of Dr. Stephen Greer, because of the work of James Gillen, coining the term CE5, uh, close encounter of the fifth kind. We know the fourth kind is when you get abducted, taken upon a ship and you fly away or whatever. Um, But the fifth kind is not when they come to you. It's when you contact them. And so the CE5 initiative, we've actually done it. I've put out. Uh, We've created events and people all over the world say, hey, at this time, we're going to go out and we're going to stargaze. We're going to meditate and we're going to see if we can see anything, if anything's out there that wants to say hello and cover ourselves in prayer and kind of go in that way. And people are having repeatable encounters that you can you can facilitate these encounters with these beings, angels that have been here since the beginning. They're watching over us. They have our greater good in mind. They literally hold space time continuum together they have helped structure this thing right and uh to be working on their team to be a part or be in the know with these light workers these beings that are here to assist to know how this energy moves and flows and things like that it's otherworldly so you need other people to talk about if, because i remember going out by myself and having those encounters and not knowing who to talk to i was scared to talk to my best friends and then I told some friends and then they quit talking to me for a long time. And I'm like, (laughs) you know, I don't think it was because I told them that. I think it was some other stuff going on. But still, the mind messes with you like, man, now I can't I can't talk to nobody. Everybody thinks I'm crazy until other people start having these encounters as well. Or until you start going live on Facebook and doing podcasts and other people are coming out the woodwork and saying, look, I've had many similar encounters as well. Here's what happened to me. This is what I this is what I do, and this is what the the messages that I've received, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, that, uh, I, yeah, I mean, today's, what is it, National UFO Day or Worldwide World UFO, UFO Day? World UFO Day, yeah. So in, in the spirit of, of, you know, honor and respect and uh, what you, what you want to, what the theme is today, keep it to that, to that. I think that's, that's the, the reason, one of the reasons we're here. But I will say this. It's not just the UFO encounters or the alien encounters, the ET encounters. It's everything. It's the, and I'm just going to use words here. I don't want to get lost in semantics because I do not believe uh, that there is anything in this universe that is not comprised within my, my body. And I mean my, my spirit body. We just can't understand everything here. Uh, but... That's opinion. I want to stay away from opinion. But what I will tell you is through the experience of 1,200 shows, uh, I see 
many, many people had the same path. They, they woke up early, and I believe yours was the same way. Uh, you had some abilities, uh, then you end up getting married, and you, and you get a matrix job, and you kind of go to sleep, and then something wakes you up. You know, usually it's trauma, not always pretty. Uh, but my point is, is these people doubted themselves. They were, cult, they were called crazy. Some were jailed. Some were institutionalized. Uh, many of them were estranged from their family. Yeah. But crazy ain't crazy anymore. You know, uh, I question everything. I think if you learn anything over the last 10 years uh, in this world, it's to question everything. I don't care who's telling you that. Uh, there's a famous quote from the Buddha. There's one from Osho, which is pretty much says the same thing. Don't listen to what I tell you. Listen to yourself. You know, the God goddess is within you, you know. But, yeah, I think uh, uh, this point you make about the repeatability is, is something that, and obviously it's something because it's not mainstream, okay? And I don't consider Joe Rogan uh, alt news anymore. I consider him mainstream. <laughs> He's, I'm with you. you know, yeah, I don't consider, and not that I take anything away from him or anyone else because yeah. everyone's got to make their own decisions. I think I told you before, my stepfather was in the CIA for 25 years. He had a very high-level position he never told me a whole lot but he told me enough to know that in the, the mid 70s uh you know the shift was real <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> there was a lot of stuff going on and known by someone who wasn't in it who was in a compartmentalized organization that was essentially was probably pulling every pulling most of the pushing most of the buttons in the world you know but so my point is is it, it that's another thing you can look for you can look for what's not being put out there in the alt news, what we might call alt news, or the mainstream. And it's these encounters that you're talking about and that I that my wife and I have shared, you know, these type of encounters. Yeah. It's uh, one of those things. You know, with with the subject of um disclosure, people are waiting for the government to come out about aliens or what's going on in space and all of this kind of secret space programs and things like that. Like I don't think disclosure is going to come from the government. Disclosure is coming from above. People are literally going out there having their own encounters and um, and talking about it, being vocal about it. I mean, what would happen if, if we weren't having these conversations? I was talking to a friend of mine earlier, and I always, you know, I've had these encounter, encounters with friends, and they won't tell a soul. They'll tell me because they know yeah. I'll talk about it, but they won't go live on Facebook. They won't, they won't even tell their wives. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like they're that yeah. scared that it's going to get out there and people are going to find out and call them crazy. They, you know, and it's so weird and something you got to forfeit. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's for it. So early on when I was called crazy or whatever, I want to smoke what you're smoking. Give me some of that. You know, all that kind of stuff. Like um, now I have a podcast that's thriving. I'm able to get up and do this for a living. I have a community of, of people who have my back, who believe in me, and I believe in them. And it's this ecosystem that's thriving, much like yourself, right? It wasn't free. You know, you had to kind of stick your head out there when it wasn't popular to do. And that's kind of, you have to pay the price. You have to count the cost. Is it yeah. worth it? Is this what yeah. you want to do? And I kind of I kind of throw it back in those people's court, and I'm like, I had to talk about it because y'all won't. You guys right. wouldn't. So we have to... You know, so now we have to be the silly one. And now, look who's laughing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We, I, I love it. I love it, man. Yeah. I get, this is what I was destined to do. I'm yeah. doing what I'm put here to do. And it wasn't, you know, to drive a truck for 16 hours a day. It wasn't to push buttons. It wasn't, you know, to do that. And so when you find out what that is, and I think spirituality, UFOs tied in, like all of this had something to do with it the greater collective, the greater levels of consciousness and where, what role do we play in this earth? And so all of this stuff comes in to really go into the dream state, like a true shaman, being able to see who you're, you're destined to be and be able to bring that out and manifest it in this reality. It's a yeah. process, but it's part of it too. And there's a lot of people waking up. They don't know what to do. They're looking for yeah. answers. They're looking all around. So I think they've come to the right place, man. Cause, cause to feel like we're isolated because that's what you feel like at first. I'm the only one having this encounter, you know, but there's people all over this. This awakening is global, man. 
There's people mm-hmm. all over the world. They look different. Yeah. They speak different. Their experiences are kind of detailed to them a little bit. Their terminology is detailed to them. They may call it a different thing, but it's yeah. the same thing. It's an awakening that's happening to people, understanding the true nature of reality and what are you going to do with it? You're going to let it yeah. freak you out because it will if you let it, you know, or you're going to try to hold on and make something out of this, you know? Well, I think that, yeah, I agree with you. And I think that the, uh, the real focus or the real gift or the real message, it's not in what, you know, I might tell someone or you might tell someone or someone you have on your show, what they might tell someone. It's actually in the story. It's in the story about, you know, who Derek is, who True Seeker is, what you're doing. It's in the story. You're the magic. The human is the hero. You've actually followed your guidance and so you follow the universe, uh, which is the same thing as the universe. And you've followed that guidance and you've had the guts to do it and the love to do it and the uh, uh, determination to do it, to overcome obstacle after obstacle after obstacle. I know you had them. <laughs> and so, so that's the beauty of it. That's the spark. That's the spark of the soul. That's actually, you know, as a lot of people will explain, in their own way, they'll say that we're all fractals of, of one uh, God, you know, one source. And, and that these fractal or this, this source is experiencing itself through each one of these fractals, uh, soul lifetime. Uh, this is what it's all about, what you're doing. It's not, it's not, the emphasis is not as strong as it used to be on these disclosure topics on the conspiratorial topics, we all know the jig is up. You know, Toto's ran behind the curtain and discovered that it's (laughs) it's a little old man that's the Wizard of Oz. Uh, So this has gone to a higher level. Just because we know more, actually everything parallels with that. Our ability, when you know more, our ability to take in more that we couldn't take before. For instance, if you were born 100 years ago, um, and, and you were talking UFOs. Uh, most of the people, look what happened in War of the Worlds with Orson Welles. He scared half the country to death, okay, doing a radio show in 1935, right? So what happens is we become more aware. We can actually take in more information now. If you want to classify everything as light or knowledge, experience, whatever, wavelengths, photonic, light, whatever, we can take in more. It's not going to fry our brain. There's a strong... Uh, there's a strong uh, knowing around the world uh, in the in the uh, the circles I run in, and these are channeled transmission download experiences that are being shared. That our bodies are being converted from a carbon body to a light based body. There's a lot of people such as myself that have these symptoms that all are like you said repeatability with the UFO encounters. Okay, these are people having the same experiences around the world. The other thing I would tell you is there is a, a school of thought, and I'm just saying this to put information out there. I'm not saying you know what I believe or don't believe. I'll try not to. Uh, but there's a school of thought that there were first waivers, way showers, that came down here that have a certain level of memory uh, from the higher aspects of whatever that is, it came down here on a mission and that, uh, and that is to, to be part of this, this great awakening and ascension. You might call them blue rays. I think there is a, ne- and in fact, I know because I'm part of it, there's a network of these people all around the world having the same experiences, getting the same intel from infinite intelligence. And it's becoming more clear and clear, clearer every day. Uh, and I see it actually becoming very cohesive and moving into like a synergetic pattern uh, where it's taking on uh, a huge power that is very new to this contemporary world, but I think we're going to see more and more of it. And it involves the angelic, the galactic, whatever we want to call all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay, the angelic, the, the galactic, you know, the UFOs, light beings, and, and just, just for the record, like I think a lot of the, the ex uh, experiences that i've had we're seeing these lights that are flying in and out of star systems and yeah. traveling the heavens i don't think that they're literally like nuts and bolts ships with beings on them now there's there's that too but i think 
the majority of what I've encountered have been these beings made out of light that are traveling. Like orbs. Yeah, orbs. Like orbs. Yeah, yeah, but they're huge, you know? Yeah. Um, and they, they travel the night sky. They're, it's in all the holy books, the angels of light, the, you know, the book of Psalms says that the, uh, you know, the Lord God maketh his ministering spirits, his warring angels as a flame of fire. And it's repeated in Hebrews. And, you know, I go back to the scriptures. That's what I'm studied in. Mm -hmm. And uh, even some of the stuff, you know, when it comes to the word uh, UFOs or, or what, what the Bible, we, we would call chariots. The Bible yeah. calls them chariots of fire. You know, you look up and you see these fiery beings, you know, yeah. uh, the word seraphim translates to the fiery ones, the ones who are made out of fire. It's something they're made out of the fire of God. And we've been able to yeah. encounter them. Um, it opens up a whole new realm, you know, uh, yeah. the word, the word chariot in, in the Bible is comprised of three different words. And, uh, and in the, in the spiritual community, it's a word that we know all too well, or three different syllables, the, the mer, the ka and the ba, the merkaba which is a vehicle of light. The ancient yeah. Egyptians believed that through meditation, you can turn your body into a vehicle of light yeah. and travel with these beings to be able to go to heaven, to have these encounters through meditation where you leave your body and you, you are a pillar of light. And there are certain yogis and different belief systems who practice this. And uh, it, it makes me wonder, Jesus and, and, and Philip in the, in the scriptures, uh, practicing by location they was able to turn their body and then they were like 300 miles away in the next sentence and like I said suddenly they were here or immediately they were translated to this place being able to move to turn your body into a vehicle of light and there's just little things like that that's sprinkled throughout all of the holy texts you know all the holy books and yeah. um if we go back and, and look at them for for what it is and, and understand it and it's like man it's promoting this stuff like these ancient philosophers understood something that has been lost to us today and now we're just reawakening to what they already knew and it's yeah. beautiful there's a scripture in the bible that says to, to stand at the crossroads and ask for the ancient path and there's so many people who are doing that i mean i think the whole dmt ayahuasca movement is people who are returning to their indigenous roots they're yeah. looking up the religion of the Native Americans, the spiritual practice. What did they do? Who, whatever they did, I want to do it. It was uh, they were at one with with their brothers and sisters, and they were at one with the earth. We've grown so far, uh, uh, you know, what I'm saying, removed from that that we even put on shoes to walk outside on on Mother Earth, and yeah. we we don't even have a have a connection that way. So people are they. It's coming from within. They are wanting to return like the Bible says, to the ancient path and ask. And it says there you'll find rest for your soul yeah. going back to yeah. the ancient path. Yeah. And, you know, the thing is, is uh, you bring up the plant medicine. I mean, uh, you can find, you know, well, let's just level off on the name. Okay. You can find God in a plant. You can find God in the ocean. You can find source, God, goddess, anywhere, anytime that you want. Uh, I think that what you bring up about the Merkaba is very important. Uh, I, I kind of believe, and this is not to convince anybody of anything, but, but uh, we all have a Merkaba. Every single one of us has a Merkaba. Uh, I think we're probably in a fishbowl of a realm in the multiverses that was some type of special deal. I don't know. We do all those things. We are that, you know. Uh, I am that, and and I am that means that does not mean that I am that, but I'm not that. We're everything. <laughs> We're everything. We're inter there's an interconnectivity to every single thing, and I think that uh, the importance of UFO Day is less about are there UFOs, and it's more about the experiences that some of which I touched on. Uh, that you asked me to speak about. They're about these experiences, this repeatability that you, that the network that you were involved with uh, in terms of these mass meditations or mass uh, initiations of, of contact, uh, C5s, these are the things we need to talk about. 
when you when you are uh, laying in bed next to your wife for you know hadn't spent more than 10 weeks together and you start to receive tones a lot of people around the world are receiving tones and vibrations in their ears yeah there's nothing at that point visual just a message hey we're coming we're coming or something's coming okay you get about three of those tones next thing you know we're told to get on our knees and face each other we never said anything to each other the whole time it happened. Uh, as we're looking at each other, both of us disappeared from the chest up, and you could see like stars, like the cosmos. And then each one of us started to morph into different past life incarnations, off-planet incarnations, off-universe incarnations, while we're receiving um, information First of all, a knowing that we knew the other incarnations in some form or fashion in every situation. Also being shown planets and different landscapes and, and such. And this goes on for 45 minutes. Now, now, how does that happen without drugs, without anything? <laughs> uh, the next one that, that stands out is one in that same room a few days later where the room filled up with translucent beings translucent beings that didn't look like ets they weren't quite uh uh materialized enough to see the specificness of their face but you could certainly see the size of them the shape of them uh we have an encounter uh, where this room fills up uh with quite a few people or quite a few beings and some things happen including we were not in a bad way touched you know, touched, lightly touched. A couple of them entered my body from behind. And I came to understand later, these were two aspects of me, one Syrian, one Alpha Centaurian, both that I've communicated with. Uh, that first encounter I told you about when it was over, uh, where our faces were morphing into incarnations where we'd known each other. And this was 45 minutes of these. A man stepped out from behind my wife and kind of nodded at me. We both saw him. He looked like Santa Claus, and he kind of made a gesture to me, and then he walked through a wall. I understood it to be the energy of Merlin. Why would I, you know, and, and there's there's some other things that synchronize with that and validate that. I don't understand all this stuff. I think the universe speaks to each one of us in its own unique way, and everybody's truth is the truth. And what's true for me not, may not be true for you. But anytime we sit here and throw down absolutes and say, well, it's got to be this way or it's got to be that way or it's got to be this way, we need to pull our human head out of our ass and start to understand that to be a divine human is an honor. It's reverent. It's a gift. We are on equal ground with any archangel, angel, and any essence out there, demon, whatever. We are sovereign, free souls. We have dominion over ourselves. This is the only piece of real estate that I that I can possess in the entire universe. And nothing can own me, and I can't own anything else. Okay? Because if I do, that's a universal violation. But the bottom line is, if we're going to really step into embrace and be, that what we came here to be. We didn't come here to be small. We came here to represent the universe. But if we're going to do that, we need to start thinking in terms beyond what we think we know and beyond it having to be explained in a literal sense to be proven to us. This is an, uh, a nonverbal language that the universe speaks that is, that is, is muddied up and, and uh, loses its, its uh, authenticity when we try to write it or speak it, I don't give a damn how good of a rapper or a writer you can be. <laughs> you're you're going to lose some of that. So it's a, it's a, it's a silent language. It's a, it's, that is the universal language. It comes in geometric shapes, colors, waves, all this yeah. stuff. And, and the, sim, the symbiology, the symbology of your everyday experience, everywhere you go, you're being told something. You're being shown something. That's where you get the 1111 and the 5555 or the, the coincidences or 
You yeah. run into somebody and it's just a coincidence. Oh, you know, are you thinking something? And then six hours later, it's you're holding it in your hand. You know, these things are happening and it's real. But it, but it, and it, and it's, and it's fueled by our, by our faith in it. So the Your more belief. we work the mat, yeah, the more we work the magic, the more we work the unseen and mm -hmm. say the hell with the world, what they think. The more we do that, the more it's reciprocated. The more it's reciprocated for one person, then you have the flower of life, and it explodes into a big soul gas because it's contagious. That's awesome, man. Um, you said that you could see God in everything, right? You see the divine in everything and you can see the fingerprint of it, of them all over, all over everything. But no, you can't, you can. As some people who are still asleep, they don't believe that any of this exists. They believe that this is the work of science fiction, that there is no spirituality. There is no other realms there are no light beings there are no angels there is no god there is no goddess um and so that's how they perceive life and so you're talking about the reality that person's reality believing and, and it being true to them it is to them that's that's life like it doesn't get it i mean you know you're born you come here you die it's it there is no other uh you know, the, you know what I'm saying? There is no afterlife. There is no heaven. There is not, none of that stuff. And so to them, that's their truth. And in, in, in their mind, it is their truth. Like literally, they live their life based off of that. They make decisions based off of that. Um, to their detriment at times, maybe to their peace, it helps them get through life and they're good. This is what they've come here to experience and, and it's good for them. Um, and it's good when you believe in, in something greater than yourself, especially with it being good. What about the people here who believe in bad things or uh, they're all, like you said, they're all, they're speaking in absolutes that God told them this, and this is the only way. Yeah. And if you don't do yeah. it, you're <clears throat> going to die and you're going to perish and you're going to burn. Um, yeah. There's all of these different things that, that c come to the, the conversation to th that person. Like that's their truth. Like, and especially if they don't tell you, they're going to burn. Like, yeah. if I don't tell you, I'm in trouble with with my power. You know what I'm saying? And I don't necessarily agree with that, but they do. Like, they believe in that. Enough to they're going to comment on your live stream. Enough to they're going to inbox you or email you or pull you aside or tell people to stay away from you because they believe that what you're doing is... is um it goes against their reality, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that is so true. Like it, it, cause people, cause like it's say truth is truth. There is no changing it. You know, it's truth f for you. If you believe it, if you don't believe in it, it's not true. When we go and they did go back to the scriptures with this, Jesus said that whatsoever you believe, nothing shall by any means be impossible. Well, yeah. I can go outside and have a CE five meditation and I can contact the angelic order that created everything. No, you can't. Want to bet? If mm -hmm. I believe it, my faith will join it. I'll go out there and I'll receive it. I will manifest it and believe it. So whatever you can believe for, you're talking about it grows in levels. Hold on, if I can do that, I can shake this nine to five job and get to love what I do for a living. You know what I'm saying? It yeah. just yeah. into every area, every aspect. If this person needs a healing in their body, well, I yeah. believe that I can talk to them and speak that healing and move some energy around. And let's just, let's just try it. Not let's yeah. try it. Let's try it and believe it. And then you do it and something happens and you're like, oh, blown. Your faith goes to a higher level. A high, you have a higher degree of faith to yeah. do greater things. And this is all throughout the scriptures, man. That's why I love it. It makes so much sense. And whatever you can believe for, the Bible says nothing shall by any means be impossible to you. What is your nothing? All nothings are different. You know that, right? Like the things that you're believing for, the things that God has put within your spirit to manifest, to bring to this reality. Some of it seems impossible. Some of it's further away than other things right now where you are. But it's not impossible. But we, we're believing for different things because of what we've experienced. There's people who have never experienced this. They think that we're special, that it's only special people who get to yeah. experience this. And they don't know. It's for those who engage it. It's for those who step out. 
and try it, right? And that's how you build your faith to, to start believing for greater things. And it, whether it's this far out spiritual, mystical stuff, which we love, we talking about it, it's for practical stuff too. It's that's for right. being at peace with humanity, being at peace with yourself. You know what I'm saying? Being, you know, walking in forgiveness and not letting anyone yeah. judge you and let that stuff cling to you, man. It, it permeates every area of your life. Yeah. Well, you said it at the beginning, you know, I mean, look, look, show me one person out of 8 billion people on the earth that can convince the rest of the world that there's a hereafter, that there's a eternal eternity or whatever you want to call it. But the way I look at it is, look, I'm living and breathing right now. I'm living, breathing, doing, being, top, and doing the things I love. This is all the eternity that I'm ever going to see. You understand? I mean, all I know is what's going on right now. Now, if anything comes at, comes from that, then that's a big plus. But we're, we're life. That's, a, that's all it is. I mean, you know, we can, we can read the books, uh, the sacred texts. We can go back to the, to the Vedas, which came long before, uh, came three to 3,000, 5,000 years before uh, the Abrahamic religions, okay? And, and you can see evidence of a nuclear war and the ET uh, presence on the earth, not just in those books, but in other books. There's so much stuff here that i you know all that stuff that's happened everything that's happened is 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 going to be there for us to read about and watch the movies and whatever the case is right but what hasn't happened is what we're doing here right now where we are and where we're going so to hell with everything that's happened i think we've all learned to forgive ourselves and forgive others and put the past behind us and not take it with by the same token, we've learned now, I think with this wider awakening or this greater expansion of the awakening, to not let the future hang on to us. You know, not, not to let the future become what the past was to us. It just looks different. Oh, when I get there, this is gonna happen. Or when I get there, I'll be happy, you know? And then the third element is this. We're all receiving infinite uh, intelligence. We're all having some type of encounter. Some people are probably just less less open to it so don't get caught up in the angels and the galactics and and the divine essences and the messages and who you were in a past life and who yeah. you are in a future <laughs> life because you're taking the emphasis off the only thing that really matters and that's right here right now and i mm -hmm. said it before and i'll say it again you're only going to be the truth seeker one time you're only going to be Derek one time i'm only going to be todd one time by god let's make it good Yep. And, and not allow anything, whether it's incarnated or disincarnated, to take away our power. I don't give a damn if the whole world tells you you're wrong. If you are in alignment with your wholeness, with your God, with your goddess, your source, your higher self, your multidimensional aspect, however you want to put it, okay? With the elementals, with the, with the earth, with the moon, the stars, the sun. If you are in alignment, follow that. Because there are people all over the world that are doing that, that are creating these fantastic fairy tale stories. You're one of them, okay? You're one of them. You listen to your heart. I know what part of the country you live in. It's not like that's uh, the most progressive <laughs> part in the world. I lived and worked there. Um, so for someone to come out, <laughs> to someone to come out, come down to, to have the, the, the path you've had, to actually have this transformation and be doing it with the style you and grace that you do it, these are the miracles, and they're happening everywhere. I, I interview people every single day, and their stories are freaking amazing. They're absolutely amazing. They're, they're, they're humanity. They're divine humanity in motion. And what's happening now through shows like yours and shows like Soul Speaks 5D is these people are having – the courage to come out and talk. And you want to know why there's been so much hesitation? Because primarily because of all the suppression of the feminine frequency that's half of our makeup throughout 
let's just say the last 2,000 years, okay? We can talk about Jesus, but why don't we talk about Magdalene? Anyone who's done any research on Magdalene will understand what an incredible prophetess she was and how important she was to him. And she's not the only feminine. But the reason that these, these folks are hesitant to come up is because it's in our DNA. These people were butchered, killed, raped, okay? There was 60 million, I think, 60 million, 70 million women slaughtered in the 13th century. I mean, this is insane. So for us to, to neglect any part of what is our composition, physical, you know, biological, spiritual, soul, the whole nine yards, I mean, this is the temple. The temple isn't just, you know, I need to be a vegan and not drink milk, you know, nothing against vegans. But, I mean, the temple is what you said earlier. Knowledge is light. We are light, light bodies. How do we turn this stuff on? We turn it on by having these conversations. I'm giving you code at a conscious or unconscious level. You're giving me code at a conscious or unconscious level. And the crazy part is, the best part is, Anybody who's part of this vortex in this moment is contributing their own code. And, and it's, a to and, it's, a, it's a to and fro. You know, it's a give and take. It's a give and receive for everyone. This is the power that we're coming into. And this collective beehive intelligence is getting bigger and bigger every day. And our access to it is, is becoming more clear every day, too. And our ability to utilize it. So by location, uh, you know, uh, teleportation, uh, you know, there's people I know all over this, all over this world that have visited other planets that have, that have done these things. I mean, this is, this is mainstream now. I personally believe that every single one of us is a Jesus and a Buddha and a Magdalene and a Kuan Yin. And that's what makes this age so special is because we're all going to be part of this colossal universal, uh, you know, ground crew that transforms the most dense realm this universe has ever seen into the highest form of light in its moment in time. You know, this is where I believe we're at. And this is why I say over and over again, the human is the hero. Yeah. The human is the hero. Let's stop waiting for spaceships to land. Let's stop <laughs> waiting for a chariot to come out of the sky with a, with an icon holding two lightning bolts, blowing fire out of his ass. Let's stop waiting you know, we've been waiting on the universe all of our lives, but maybe it's the universe that's been waiting on us. Yeah, that's good. And maybe we need to put our boots on and and, and be the uh, mature, flowering, blossoming, courageous, uh, bl- uh, trailblazing, valiant souls that we are. And, and uh, Regardless of whether you think we're warm dirt when this thing's over or we go into the 72 levels of heaven or whatever the case is, the bottom line is you're only Derek one time, I'm Todd one time. And if I got to, at this point in the game, if we allow this world to slow us down in our personal journey, that's a choice that we'll have to live with. I'm not going to live with it. Yeah. It's part of, it's usually part of the story at some point, right? Like people, I mean, it's, it's, you're talking about (laughs) the human is the hero. And I'm reminded of the hero's journey, right? And so it's this awakening process of being called and then coming into the understanding and then doubting yourself and then going through a dark night and just kind of like giving up or whatever the case is. But yeah, we are all on that journey. That's the story of Jesus. Jesus, like the hero's journey. It's the story of Anakin Skywalker. You know, it's the story of Luke Skywalker. It's the story of the Buddhists. They all play the hero's journey and it's mapped out and you just have to see where you are and we are the heroes of the story whether we you know it's you, you mentioned merlin it was that's synchronistic we watched um the kid who became king yesterday at least half of it it's a long movie but it was about merlin coming into this reality it was about the spirit of merlin coming into this reality in a different body to teach yeah. young a young kid that who, who he was called to be the Merlin, I mean, the uh, King Arthur of this generation, which is insane. What's the name, insane What's the name that of that you, you missed it, brought it up. Them. The Kid Who Became King. It just came out. Um, it's pretty good, too. Pretty good. But, yeah, we watched we watched a good bit of that yesterday. And so, man, everything just works together for your good, man. Everything works together. Whether it is the setbacks. The setbacks become a slingshot 
if you learn from it, right? Not yeah. if, and, and learn to quit making the same mistakes twice. Quit yeah. learning to give in to temptation. Quit learning to be intoxicated by the applause of the people. You know, playing, singing to the choir, like doing what you're called to be. Not just staying where it's safe, but doing what it, what God has placed within you to manifest and bring out. It's not easy. Healing isn't easy. Forgiveness, forgiving isn't easy. If it was, then it would be something natural. It's, we tend to hold grudges and get offended and get hurt and carry it with us for years. But letting that weight go and doing the inner healing, healing ourselves, healing the healers so that we can go forth and heal the nations, man. That's what it's about. So yeah. UFOs, spirituality, it all ties in together. And uh, it's, it's awesome. Let me ask you this because you've interviewed a lot of people. Now, have have you ever had anyone on your show that maybe you thought were just kind of making it up as they go? Maybe you thought they were full of it or they were like really egotistical or has everybody just been, uh, you know, fun to work with or whatever the case? Have you ever had any of those weird interviews like you're like just kind of mm -hmm. second guessing the person? Um, You know, I, I had this one guy, True Seeker, on and I feel like... <laughs> yeah, no, no. no, actually, uh, I really enjoy. I, no, 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 that's not. I had to say this. So, so, you know, my wife has been downloading, let's just say, for 20 years in solitude, uh, in anonymity, like many, many, many women, particularly that I've met that have been on the show and that I've just met online. Um, so there's, there's some things, some practical soul sense things I've learned from her. And one of them was probably 350 to 400 shows in. She said, because I did, I had some problems. And it wasn't, yeah, I'd be like, man, I don't want to talk to this person. You know, <laughs> I don't resonate with this yeah. person. But I, but I was told from day one, well, solo G is just a word. It's a word for Holy Spirit. It's a word for one oneness one it, it, it everyone's included whether you like it or not that's the whole mentality so just because todd the human aspect doesn't like something doesn't mean that it's not coming on we're wide open the group's always been wide open and the show's info's wide open as long as there's nothing and that hasn't happened as long as it's not anything that's tearing anybody down you know but anyway so to answer your question she taught me when you sit down invite their higher self in, you know, get to that higher, that higher aspect of yourself and, and, and then ask their higher aspect to come in. Now this could be explained another way. I used to do this before my, my, uh, uh methodology or terminology or, or, or embodiment became, became to a different, or came to a different level. I would say, I want all of my angels, to go see all of Derek's angels. Let's have a powwow and let's make this for the highest good of all involved. Okay. I might say something like that. So once I started doing this, uh, I started to understand that the consciousness that was created by me and the other person and the people in the audience was actually in and of itself in charge. And if I could allow myself to reach the, to, to, to have the trajectory of my highest potential, my highest contribution, uh, my highest level of service, my highest level of love and openness, that was all I could do, that somehow or another it can it can contribute, right? And others are doing the same thing. So what I've found is is that normally there's if there is any any type of doubt or anything like that, normally it works itself out. Um, I do I do think that for the most part it's been a pretty, uh, pretty strong truth quotient. I think maybe in the 95th, 98th percentile. And I'm not saying that out of arrogance or anything else. I'm saying that out of the purity of the consciousness that I call Sology. Uh, and, and, and here's the other thing. Many of the people, most of the people that have been on the show have had intense, uh, consistent, uh, dramatic, uh, divine intervention and mm -hmm. divine episodes as you say with all respect they're all in the same boat ufos galactic angelics da, 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 okay mm -hmm. 
And so that is, I mean, the higher your soul goes, the higher your ego goes, period, end of story, all right? Period, end of story. You would not be, the ego is the universe's great equalizer. It's our tool in this realm. It's not to be in control and driving the car, but but you know what? Put in the passenger seat, it's a pretty good uh, secondhand air. What do you call it? A, a second person, or the, the second pilot or whatever you call it. It's a pretty good one because it's got good eyes and good ears. And yeah, it's a little bit uh, self-absorbed and survival, you know, paranoid about its survival. But it can sure tell you a lot. If you keep it in check, it's your shadow. You know, I wrote something the other day. Don't walk to the light. Walk with the light behind you, because that way you can see your shadow every step of the way. You know, our shadow is part of us. Our ego is part of us. Every single thing that that we that is part of us. And we've spent a lot of time trying to disengage and disassociate and separate ourselves from parts of us. Well, if we're doing that, don't you think we'll be separating ourselves from other parts of uh, the universe, of God's creation? I mean... We are the temple. We are made in the image. Everything that has comprised us that we've liked and not liked is part of us. And, needs, and, and, it, and it is in our best interest uh, to a, a perfect or near perfect alignment to love every part of it. I know you had a lot of, a lot of experience with dark energy. I did, too. Uh, you know what? Today, I've got no problem with that. And, mm-hmm. uh, and I occasionally run into something that might be kind of uh, scary. That would have scared the hell out of me five years ago, but it isn't anymore. You know, I just look at it and I open my heart and say, you know, I'm, I have complete faith. I am all parts of darkness, all parts of light. I am the universe in its entirety. Come give me a big hug and then be on your way, you know, or whatever. You know, I'm just being funny and paraphrasing it. But, but uh, you know, it, it, this is such a... a a powerful trip that we're all on, but we are the dog chasing its tail. And it's time to, to uh, shift or get out the pot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's, sha- it's time. The shadow is powerful on, in, in many aspects, whether we look at it as our dark side, right? Yeah. Those uh, dark nights of the soul where we had to kind of spend some time with the shadow self. I wouldn't give anything uh, to change it. Like no. I, I'm thankful. Now, when I was going through it, most like, <laughs> just like many of you, when you're going through it, you're like, get me out of this, help me, you know, and, yeah. and that's part of it. But now that I look back on it, I'm thankful for all of it. Like all of the, you know, the, the crazy, crazy stuff and the darkness and the betrayal and the questions and the doubts and the depression. Like I'm thankful for it now because now we get to see it when it comes. Now we know what it looks like. We know what the darkness looks like. We know what um, uh, depression looks like. We know how to get out of it. We've been here before. And then on top of that, there's a natural empathy that comes because you've been through it, right? Um, Obviously, if we're one with the creator, um, it doesn't matter if you have been through that. You have that power to help people to get through whatever it is, if you've experienced it or not. You have the power to tap into that infinite source to do that, but it helps because you literally have a natural empathy. You really care about those people who are going yeah. through that that stuff, you know? Yeah, and there's a, and you know, the thing is too. I mean, even if even when everybody's everybody's experiences are the same, uh, my pain is the same as your pain proportionate to my life experience and and that and, and what i mean by that is is that it you were saying it earlier like uh people might look at you and think oh he's had these spiritual experiences and he's something i'm not and yeah. and, and you were making that point we're all the same it, we're all the same this competition comparison frequency programming is just that okay this whole thing that's happening is us really awakening to ourselves, but way beyond what we would have thought you could define it as 10 years ago. If, if anyone would just consider this, you know, we know, for instance, that the, that, the, that the government or the powerless powers that be, as I like to call them, 
had been had been locked into this thing at least 70, 80 years, going back to World War II, going back to Roswell. Now, do you really think that they're the sharpest tool in the, in the shed? Or do you think if you go back to the Nag Hammadi that may in 25% of it talks about the Archons, or you want to talk about this, you talk about that. You know, we're talking about some stuff that's way above this 1%, okay? So even that stuff that's coming at us from those different places, be they demonic, by human terms, angelic, still has no dominion over us. They're there to assist us. They're there to help us find ourselves. So I agree with you. I think in this realm, the shadow is the gold. You know, and I've learned a lot of this through my wife because she's a, she's an energy worker and a energy practitioner and, and a shadow eater, basically, is what she would define herself as. But that's where the gold is. Any, a shadow, what is a shadow but a fear? You know, I mean, that's really what it is when you get down to it. I mean, we can cliche this thing all day long, but I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> I, the reason I brought up the thing about we're all the same is because I know you've had what many would consider demonic interaction. I have yeah. too. Yeah. Okay. I've been laid out on a, a table and filleted like a fish, you know, more than once. And I wouldn't wish it on anybody. But I'll tell you what, I run into that now. And it's not a problem. And that's not arrogance because you know how the universe treats arrogance. That's humility. It's humility when I can look three years ago, maybe three years ago, four years ago, look into a full length floor to ceiling mirror in my house at the time. And three o'clock in the morning in a dimensional state, you know, in, in communion for hours. And I look at myself and I'm told, step up to the mirror I step up to the mirror like just my foot right against the wall and i hear these words uh no i say these words i look at myself right in the eye i am soul that's all i know i am soul and i watch the image of my body turn into an ogre into an ogre and and it looks at me and says, are you sure? And I said, you're damn right, I'm sure. I am so. And I watched it shrink like into a little cartoon and just walk away. My point is, my point is, is that those demonic things, you know, too much light and too much dark are going to bring you to the same place. We talked about ego a minute ago. Too much light, you know, like you're doing, you're doing all this good. Uh, you get all this attention, you wouldn't be normal if it didn't affect you. It's one thing to, to see it come in and keep it Man. in check, but it's another thing to get yeah. steamrolled by it. So we're looking for a zero point here. We're looking for balance. We're looking for acceptance of all the universe. If, I have, if I'm at my zero point and my zero point says, okay, I'm at peace with anyone that I don't uh, jive with culturally, color of my skin, religion, this or that, but if you're homosexual, I'm going to put you over here in this corner, right? That's not Jesus-like. That's not Buddha-like. That's not Magdalene-like. That's not Derek-like or Todd-like. We're all the same. We're all the same, you know? And uh, part of that is the, the shadow experience. In fact, the shadow experience is the greatest common denominator that we have. Yeah. Because we're conscious here. Now, if you get past this realm and we have the higher perspective and it's 100 percent full time with us and not coming and going. All right. Then it might be different. But in this realm, the experience of being a human being. OK, the irrepressible, revolutionary human being species that never gives up, no matter who who's oppressing them, who's killing them, who's torturing them, never gives up the human hybrid soul history is all about overcoming never giving up relevolution okay and uh, and i think it's all paying off now i think that we're actually in a place now where we can take this as far as we want and the universal family is sitting on the edge of their seat saying oh my god i didn't think they could go this far this fast and how far will they go you know 
because there's been a lot of prayers, a lot of whatever you want to call it, put up, as you referenced earlier, in the dark night of the soul, when you're saying, beam me up out of here, get me the hell out of here now. Jesus, take me home. You know, Lord, take me home. I'm done. Stick a fork in my butt. I'm done. You know, a lot of us have done that. And even recently. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but I think that the, that the reciprocation is occurring now. And if you look at the spirit science, if you look at the science, if you look at the scriptures, everything's pointed to this time. And I think that was a forecast uh, of a template or a blueprint where there was a knowing of what would occur in probability. The question is, now that we have this awareness, what are we going to do with it? Mm -hmm. That's to me what this game's about. Here's all yeah. the knowledge. You might call it Akashic Records, scriptures, whatever. Here mm -hmm. it all is given to you. Now that you have it and you've absorbed it, what are you going to do with it? Okay, that's that's the God-like or goddess-like quality that we have. It's creation. What are we going to do with it? What are we going to do? And 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 what's happening outside of us? Most of us will think the global stuff, right? Oh my God, the world's going to hell. Da, 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 da. No, I see it every day, and it's. It's the finger pointing. Oh, well, they do this and they do that. And, and it's not over there in some uh, uh, different cultural organization or, or country or community. It's right there in front of your face in your own community. You know, I've said it many times. Astrology is not a social circle. It's an energy. Okay. You know, don't get mad at me if I don't answer your message or uh, tell you or I don't tell you I love you. You know. I love everybody. We all love everybody. Let's get past all this junior high stuff and let's get down to the brass tacks. And what is that? <laughs> that is living Man. your life. You know, that's living your life like you're doing. Yeah. Uh, or that I'm doing. And many other people. That's the power. That's the story. And you don't have to tell anybody. You know why? Because your soul's lighting up the whole grid. It's lighting up the whole grid. And it's not through anything other than the, the sheer energy that you're creating by the power of uh, to, uh, to thine own self be true to you be true to Derek that's what Derek's doing and what's Derek doing he's having a blast you know I mean I tell my wife all the time this is our job <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, let's right. do it <laughs> dreams of this day you know um, man th that's interesting though you talk about um, you know let's grow up we're not high school students or middle school students but working with large amounts of people in a collective and with the community, um, it becomes hard because you find yourself going through the middle school stuff because a lot of people tend to stagnate and stay in this area from when the trauma happened to them. So if, yeah. if trauma happened to them when, when they were 11, they kind of stay there emotionally right? They need attention. They need a mother. They need that. And so they're so needy, right? And so even though they're old in the physical body, maybe, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70, whatever, they're still stuck in this needy sp space spiritually. And you have to kind of cater to these people um, that sometimes the drama comes, the gossiping, the backbiting, or he likes me more than you and all of, and just weird stuff and people who just haven't really done the in, inner work. And I, this is something that I'm always guilty of. I've been guilty of it for a long time, but I just kind of assume that people know what I know. Have you ever get there? Like, cause we're talking about these UFOs and even like you talked about the, you know what I'm saying? The war of the worlds and you just kind of ran past it. You heard it a bunch. There's people who have no idea what that was. The War of the Worlds uh, bro broadcast that happened, you know, but we feel like people know everything that we know. So we just kind of brush by it, yeah. but they don't. They're still, you know, babes in a lot of this stuff and they need to be taught. And, uh, you know, the Apostle Paul said that uh, strong meat is for those who are spiritually mature and those who are kind of new or young in this kind of still need milk. And it's hard to sometimes discern where people are to uh to really gel there and and they could be healers like i know healers who are 11 years old spiritually you know yeah. um and it's really hard but it's about doing that inner work for yourself and and not 
putting all the <laughs> baggage on those around you. Like, yeah. Do the inner work because then you're not always taken. You're bringing something to the table. Yeah. You know, you, you yeah. know, you know who you are. You're confident in that. And nobody can tell you otherwise. And it's not a cockiness. There's not an arrogance that comes with that. But it's just an inward knowing of who you are and what you bring to the table. And you are valuable, each and every one of us. But Absolutely. not to bring that, that other stuff, man. And, like, well, yeah, it's, well, it's hard, bro. I'm, it's, yeah, but it's, uh, it's you know, it's so interesting because everything in the universe, as I understand it, my experience, from early on eight years ago, uh, is paradoxical. You see one thing, it looks like it's up, it's down. You see a circle, it's a square. Yeah. Left is right, and left, right is left. So I think what's, what's again, what's happening in, in maybe a less conscious way, but becoming more conscious in this expansion or this awakening, is that there's really two types of frequencies of, let's just call it love, right? And one of them is codependent. And one of them's co-creation or collaboration. All right. So let's say that I'm concerned about Tom and Dick and Jane over here, because Tom and Dick and Jane don't get it, uh, or because they're stuck in their uh, wounded child. Uh, if I cater to them, I'm enabling them. Right. Yeah. So it takes two. It's a yeah. codependent relationship. So the whole yogi guru thing's kind of gone away now. <laughs> That's why it's not working anymore because, because there's been enough people rise in their self-awareness, self-respect, honor, and reverence, and love, and maturity that have said no. That's why people are giving up on books. They're saying, I don't need that. Not out of disrespect. There's more people writing books. There's less people reading books. The importance <laughs> is to write the book. The importance is to make the broadcast. Yeah. But I think on in terms of, uh, and that's what I was saying earlier about, we look at the external, we think it's the global, but it's right in our face. Okay, so A, if I'm focused on these other people, guess where my focus is not? On me. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't see anybody walking on the water. Do you? I haven't seen anybody because I'm sure it would have hit the CNN news if somebody was walking on the water. So my point is, until until we're walking on water, we need to be focusing on ourselves because this is a full-time job. Now, if we do that, we're simultaneously going to send a mirrored frequency out of what we're doing. That's the importance of write that book. I don't give a damn how many people buy it. Do that program. I don't care how many people participate. Do whatever you need to do. Make that artistic piece. Whatever you can channel from creation and create your own and, and perpetuate that frequency of unconditional love and highest intention and, and bliss, right? It's not going to come from, there's a lot of wounded healers that are starting to crack. Okay. Which means yeah. I need to go heal this person and that person and this person. So I don't have to think about healing myself. Right. Yeah. This is the shadows. These are the deep shadows we're getting into now. This is where the gold is. This is where the higher alchemical powers, the magic, the healing abilities, we're all healers, we're all shamans, we're all magicians, we're all alchemists. Every single one of us is. And the only difference between us and what we might call the angelics, the galactic, so on and so on, is we had either the foolishness, honesty, bravery, courageousness, uh, balls, whatever you want to call it, to get down here, incarnate into a physical body in this dense atmosphere where you can barely breathe and you feel like you're in an elevator half the time and actually do this thing. And actually, we didn't just come down here to be human. We came down here to be divinely human transform and transform ourselves and transform this realm and this dimension. Heaven's not up there. Heaven's right here. And think about the paradoxical reality of it. If you were going to divine, uh, design a universe or universes in your, in your God, your source, where would you put the thickest layer? Where would you put the thickest layer uh, in, in relation to the core, into, into the relation of the, the heart and the soul of, of the, 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 the total body of God itself? 
where would you put would you would you put the the heaviest densest realm the light years away from you or would you put it right next to you you know it yeah. should get harder to chip through the closer you get there that's why so many people quit things right before they're going to hit it i've been guilty of that i'm sure you've probably been guilty of that we give up this is this yeah. is the stretch run this is the this is the you know this is the uh, final 40 yards of the of the of the marathon and and uh you know, it, it's an honor to be here. We should, we, sh, we have all the reason in the world to be honoring ourselves and each other because it took a lot of courage to come down here. And many of us didn't come down here just one time. <laughs> many of us have scars all over our soul's body, you know? So, uh, but, you know, I guess what I'm saying is that I know self be true doesn't just mean uh, be looking under the hood all the time. Another way to put that is get your nose out of my business, you know, because I, you know, what does it say in the Bible? He who throws stones, be sure you don't live in a glass house or something like that. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, this is, this stuff has been there for us all along. It's just, we've been in the most complicated uh, conditioning programming, but you know what? They're just people like us too, this 1% or 2% or whatever the hell it is. They're just like us. They put their socks on just like we do. You know, we are divine. We are uh, sovereign and we have dominion over the only piece of real estate that we can in this universe. And that's ourselves. But by honoring ourselves and by uh, transforming ourselves, whatever we do with ourselves is going to happen. Like you said at the top of the show, going to happen with that circle closest to you. And then the one out a little further and a little further and a little further. Yep. And that's how we turn this thing upside down. It's not from some huge, like you said earlier, about these people boycotting and tra- tra- marching and all that stuff. And, okay, let's all meet at this time around the world. No, it's from right here, and nobody has to know about it but you. And you know the other thing about it? You can't even lie about it. You can't even lie about it. If you mm-hmm. want to go around and tell everybody uh, – you know, look what I did. Da, 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 da. Who are you trying to convince them or yourself? Yep. You know what I mean? So this is a one-on-one personal experience between you and the universe. That's it. That's it. Uh, and you can't BS the universe. You know how that goes. <laughs> you know? so, yeah. So, that's good stuff. And that's, and that's all our, that that's, and I hate to make light of it, but that's all we have to do. You said it. It's, it's, it's the inner, introspection the inner journey and, and it is it, you know like uh einstein and his contemporaries found last century mid-century looking for the god key right they were looking for the god key trying to find that component in in the human body and they found that the human body is the more you went inward is as infinite as when you look in the stars and you go outward yeah so as within, without, yep. you know, above, below, and all that. So, I mean, do the math. It's pretty simple. Yep. <laughs> the kingdom plus, is within the anatomy right? of man. One plus one equals three, the trinity. The That's temple, the real math. temple of God in the sky, in the mind, in the heart. Yeah. God dwells within, and the Bible is very clear about that. Yeah. Is it... Um, it's, like we're just, it's, it's almost like that mirror you're talking about, standing in front of that mirror. And so, like, when we gaze into the heavens we're really gazing into ourselves because yeah. heaven is within it's yeah. within and without as above so below on earth as it is in heaven let thy will be done and understanding from every aspect it's a mirror of what's within the beautiful thing about that you're talking about sovereignty is that you have everything that you need you don't need anything outside of yourself that they're selling like there's stuff that helps there's stuff that aids us and all that kind of stuff but you don't need any of it all of it's within for you to close your eyes to go within and through prayer and through meditation speaking to the creator and go in and encounter the universe to encounter what is real the angels the demons god goddess elements whatever it is it's all within experience within and if you don't learn how to do that you trying to find some external pleasure or trying to find God in the, in the sky or God in the, in the stars, you're going to be lost, but you have to learn in order to get out there, you have to go within here. And that's turning your body into the vessel of light 
so that yeah. you can be named among the stars as well. It's so beautiful, man. It, it reminds me also, like in the scriptures, there was a an, an instance where Jesus' disciples were trying to uh, cast a demon out of a demon-possessed man. And uh, they uh, came came up to the guy and they're holding him down, trying to pray for him and all, trying to cast the demon out. And the dude looked at him and said, hold on, Jesus I know, Paul I know, <laughs> But who are you? It's like, I don't even know you guys. It's, your name is not, we have never heard of you. You know, and then the dude beat all of them up and sent them away naked. You know what I'm saying? They didn't know. So the other realms, not only the demons, but the angels, they know who you are. And so okay. for you to, to name yourself among them and to be someone who, that's who I want to be known by. Many people want to be known and have renown of on the earth. And I'm telling you, the, the applause of men is intoxicating. People do silly things to have people uh, clap and applaud for them. And it, it's intoxicating. I did it for years as well. But to have your name to be known before the creator and before the elements and they know who you are and you're one with them. That, that, that's another level of notoriety that only comes from seeking God within going within those inner courts the secret chambers of the heart meeting with your creator and that's where all of this stuff comes out of if there is a platform if there is notoriety it's only gonna it, it needs to only come out of that one place other than that pride cometh before a fall you have no foundation you'll ruin everything you're trying to build you have to yeah. go within and it's a daily communion it really yes. is there's no days off <laughs> you don't get to that's, skip a day you know you got to show up for yourself every day See, to me, that's the perfect explanation of the value of shadow work. Because, because look, in the universe, nothing comes free. Uh, I was told eight years ago, over and over, as I walk the streets every day, you cannot miss a step on the soul highway. Nobody gets a shortcut. This isn't yeah. like a Monopoly game where you can go past go and collect $200. So, on that, and, and the second thing is, is in the universe, there is not a hierarchy, but... There is what I would refer to uh, as a as a um, maturity, soul maturity level. Uh, if you look at Emanuel Swedenborg, for instance, Emanuel Swedenborg in the 1600s during the Renaissance, very world-renowned Renaissance man, uh, and I won't get into all his his credentials and stuff. He went at 57 years old to to find the soul as a medical doctor. That's one of the many things he did. He started laying down on his couch every afternoon for 17 years. Okay. What he was doing was he was going into the heavens. We can call it many different things. He was shown 144 levels of heaven and hell, 72 hell, 72 heaven. And what he talked about was that there were, that obviously, the higher you went, the lighter it got, the more angelic presence, and so on, so on, so on. In order to do that, I'm convinced that if I, if I want to be at the 36th level of this metaphoric explanation of heaven, I have got to have visited the 36th, 36th level of hell. Okay? That's deep. Yeah. You can only go as high above the line as you've gone below it. And here's the rule of the universe. You can do whatever you want to. Hmm. If you don't want to go through that door, don't go through that door. If you want to level off here, you level off here. But I got news for you. There's something about the soul, and I think in this realm it works the same as everywhere else. Once it starts to stir, once somebody runs into Truth Seeker and they hear something, there's something that goes off in their head, a code gets open, you can go back to your normal life, but your soul is going to start churning inside <laughs> of you saying, hey, pal. And here's the thing. If you ignore it, which is what many of us did, because, mm -hmm. uh, because I'm very convinced, too, that a stubborn ego is a sign of a stubborn soul. And a stubborn soul is probably the best representation this universe can have because it's not going to stop at anything. It'll even die for, for, for truth, for the truth. But, it, but if you ignore it, <laughs> you're going to get your ass kicked. I can promise you. That's why so many of these light workers or way showers have had all these traumas because they needed a swift kick in the butt to, to yeah. finally say, okay, I'm not just this body. I'm not just this bag of bones. I'm connected to something. I don't understand it. You tell me to pack my stuff, get rid of all my belongings, and go walk the streets for two. You know, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing it, but that's what I'm going to do. But the, the, the important thing is they listen. They listen. They honored themselves 
and honored the universe, God, source, goddess, and they listened. And now enough of them have done it uh, to create a, a small, powerful minority that is assisting humanity in awakening, which has nothing to do, in my opinion, with Q, with Trump, with politics, with geopolitics, <laughs> with, with anything. That stuff, like you said, that stuff gets it, clicks, though, man. It does. Yes, it gets clicks. Mm -hmm. Yes, it gets clicks. And 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 it's it's one thing to go out and do stuff, and be, and be driven by the clicks, but it's the people like you. It's the people out there that I interview every day. It's the people that don't give a damn how many clicks there are. This is the importance of go write the book. This is the importance of go do the video, go do the show, go create this, go create that. It ain't about the clicks because let me tell you something. The universe, God, source, goddess, whatever you want to call yeah. it, doesn't miss a thing. Yeah. And I've received That's good, man. I've received several communications, all right? Both in my own right, but also in other people coming to me on the show sometimes that the work that Sology is doing, which could be applied to you, could be applied to anyone, is being seen all over the universe. They're learning from us. They're learning more from us than we're learning from them. What they have to offer, in a sense, as we came into this world, they, the you, me, we, and it, was a finite, a finite uh, block of light let's say, the Akashic, whatever you want to call it, the experiential, whatever you want to call it, time up to that point. But what we do with it from here is going to add to that infinite knowledge and it's going to be passed on to the next wave. You know what I mean? And, and on your comment about how you'd like to be remembered or where you would like for your place to be, Look, I don't know who I was with any certainty in past lives, parallel lives, alternate timelines, future, whatever. You were a great king. But I'm, but I'm Todd Medina. I'm Todd <laughs> Medina. And, and I agree <laughs> with you. And I and I believe you cannot underestimate the power of one unique and equal soul. And whatever imprint Todd Medina can leave in the spirit of collaboration and co-creation, because that's how it works, all right? Uh, that's the only shot I got that I know about. So... I'm you with know, you on that, man. If, you know, if I was Alexander the Great in a past life, who, who, the, who the F cares? You know, I mean, who cares who you were? Who are you? Who are you? You know, what are you? And what are you a part of? You know? Yep. So I don't know. I'm with it you is. on that, man, for sure. For sure. Um, dude, it's been fun. Yeah, I've enjoyed it, it man. How many, how many other talks are you doing today? Actually, today, um, uh, the producer gave me the day off. Uh. <laughs> no. Yeah, we yeah we're gonna take a break today. We just I think I think she told me I, I don't know she just loaded up uh, of the last two three days she loaded up the whole month. So I mean because we probably got another seventy or eighty to do this month. But uh, today, you know, I got up early five o'clock. Uh, I was excited about uh, meeting with you. I, I enjoy the chemistry between us. Uh, I admire what you're doing. I really do. And uh, and I uh, did a watch party on my page. I saw about forty people in there and. On a couple other pages, I'll be uh, happy to Thank you, support sir. you and uh, expand the awareness of what you're doing. Uh, if you need any, uh, if there's, you feel like there's anything we can do to help you uh, get gain awareness uh, of what you're doing, uh, we'll be glad to, to serve you there. I, I just want to say, you know, you're doing it. You know, it's not about what you say. It, you're doing it. You know, you are illuminating this grid by walking the path of truth, which is to thine own self be true, being true to yourself. And like you said, I, I'm a, I, I agree hundred percent. You start with the circle closest to you and you start to go out. Yeah. Not only for your illumination, which is probably the same thing, but also your shadows. Like Ram Dass said, if you think you're awake and go spend some time with your family for a few days. Well, this is where our greatest opportunities are, you know, where we had the deepest wounds. But at the same time, from that center of the universe that we are, we illuminate, and, and I agree with what you said 100%. And I and I see you doing it, and I see other people doing it. So I just want to say big props, big props to you, man. And if I ever get over that way, uh, we'll have to do a little uh, improv. Uh, what would they call that? A slam? <laughs> a spiritual <laughs> yeah, rap man. slam. 
for sure for sure that's what's up well brother thank you for coming on hanging out with me let everybody know um who aren't already tied in with your work where they can check out what you do man uh well you can find us uh, we've been working on a website for like a long time <laughs> so it's not ready but uh so we've got a well you know what i do everything on my uh on my facebook personal page todd medina for reasons uh to stay above the algorithms we all we, we've tried it in we have a soldier group we have a soldier one studios page but we yeah. got suppressed we got suppressed too much so you can watch uh, uh everything we do on my page it's where it originates but you can also catch the replays on youtube uh, so we've got a youtube channel soldier one studios and i think we've got about five or six hundred of the soul speaks 5ds on there probably another 300 videos on there the music and some different stuff but uh we've, we've been more attentive to that since the first of the year thank you michael van pat so you can find us there and and very soon uh, or whenever whenever there's a perfect alignment with the universe and in the it winks at us we'll have our own website where we'll be promoting a multiple channel app based or app accessible network of 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 different shows and different channels such as what you do so at that at some point, I'm going to come knocking on your door and say, "Hey, you want to, you want to jump in on this?" It, it's based on um, collaboration, co-creation, and what I call 5D commerce. Yeah, which is which is all about gifting, all about the honor system, and paying it forward. So whatever comes into the to the funnel is distributed proportionate to viewership, and you just keep the ball rolling. And you know as well as I do that the more traffic you drive to a URL address the more probability and potential you have for sponsors and advertisers. And you know what, this is, this is feeding that non-physical. This is actually doing yeah. something that's not been done before, which is what you're doing, what we're doing at Sology. This is the new magic of old. And uh, this is what uh, yeah. the prophets and the prophets just were talking about. You know? Yeah. This is, this is um, needs to be talked about as well. This is kind of where the rubber meets the road because for so long, what we were doing was thriving with this um, alternative media, with um, the Joe Rogan podcast that gets more views than your average CNN television oh, yeah. show, right? Um, these other, um, man, there's so many of them in 5D who's out there. There's uh, spirit science and metaphysics. Like there was all of these groups that yeah. were getting hundreds of thousands of, of clicks per month. Um websites, info wars, all of this kind of stuff, the the alternative media, um, big media was suffering. Yeah. And and for a long time they were dying. They're yeah. dying. Something happened. We were getting a cut of advertising revenue and all of this stuff. Something happened where as they looked like they were about to die out, they flipped the switch. Something had to come together. Look, if we're gonna save what 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 is what we've built here, what's always been, we got to do something. Now, they've come together, and they've knocked out the fact that okay, you mentioned this word and that word. You're this. There's we cannot serve ads on this episode. Really, you knocked out my chance to make a few dollars off of this to keep doing what I'm doing. There's that. Then there's looking at what happened to Alex Jones. I mean, everybody deplatformed him, kicked him off of iTunes, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, everything. And it's not just him. There's other people. There's so many other people. And then the smaller people, too. Like we yeah. may just be making just a few dollars a month and we're on YouTube or Twitter. And, and you say something that they don't like or they don't agree with. Like they did something, man as a last effort to, to keep their voice. And it is the algorithm. It's, yeah, it it's sure all is. of that right. stuff. If it's not with yeah. what they're pushing for the, w with their agenda, yeah. with their political ideas and the political party to get the candidate, it's really crazy. So now we're still trying to figure out this stuff and work through the algorithms to find out ways to gain support, to continue to do this and be creative and use yeah. our God given tools to do that. Yeah. So things such as Patreon and different crowdfunding services and stuff like that totally come into play. Some of my best episodes, I can't even monetize because we got a little bit too deep on it. They were, the guests mentioned a couple words that, YouTube didn't like and they just they pull the funding and it's not a lot of money that you make, but it all adds up. So with these other 
you know, Patreon and, and, and selling books and selling music and all of that stuff. It, it, it adds up, man, to support your favorite yeah. creator. And it, it really does. And so we're really thankful and uh, trying to figure out ways to take the power back. Right. So it's this weird shift who to believe and, and what, yeah. what to, you know, man, it's crazy. That's uh, that's, you know, and I'll just tell you this and we'll get out of here. I mean, but I, this whole 5d commerce thing and this thing about a multiple channel network that's app accessible, handheld accessible. Uh, I actually downloaded this stuff going back about five or six years in images and in, in, in just different, I didn't really totally understand it. Now, there's other people involved now. I've learned not to rush anything. I've learned with the with the, uh, the guidance of my wife, you know, being that I was a straight alpha male, <laughs> not to force anything because nothing comes for the energy of force. It's just to allow it all to come. And uh, I really believe that, look, I don't monetize at, at Soldier One Studios on YouTube. I mean, I ran 12 hours of tape of six minute segments from, from shows, 12 hours straight. And, uh, well, four hours, three days in a row after the third day. And then there's nothing on here. There might be a couple F bombs here and there, but there was nothing conspiratorial. There was nothing, you know, anarchist. There was nothing, nothing that nothing <laughs> that they should have been concerned about. And I got, we got our first strike, uh, for playing 12 hours of these, the type of conversation you and I had, right? That's it. And, uh, we're not monetizing. I refuse to participate. We refuse to participate. We appreciate and love the offering and the opportunity. But I've been told for eight years, if it's been done before, don't do it. Find a new way. Create your way out. And I believe that Sology, uh is uh, supported. I know it is supported by the physical world and the non-physical world to a great degree. There are many, many people and energies involved, and I believe we will see very soon a multiple channel, uh, uh, app accessible, handheld accessible, that is a community, that is a collaboration, a co-creation that honors the honor system, 5D commerce, pay it forward, gifting. Okay? Uh, this is what I've received, and, and uh, I got to do what you're doing. I got to follow, follow the directions I'm getting. So, <laughs> Wait, that's all you uh, can do, man. But, but I think that would do it because you would have your own private server. Uh, you wouldn't be at the mercy of anything or anyone. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that's good you know. stuff. Well, brother. Hey, man, I, I appreciate your, the opportunity. I've been really enjoyed it. Uh, I really, really do. I love your work and I'd love to collaborate with you again in the future. Definitely. We're going to do it again for sure. And, and for those of you who haven't, um, just go to, I guess, YouTube and type in, um, Todd Medina and True Seeker, and you'll see the episode that I did with Todd on his his uh, yeah. podcast as well. So you guys go check that out too. So yeah. Todd, thanks for right. coming on, man. We'll have to do it again soon, my brother. All right, brother. All right, many blessings. Later. Shalom, shalom. Take care. Peace. Bye -bye. Todd Medina, ladies and gentlemen, good stuff. Good stuff. If you guys have any questions, uh, make sure you put them in the chat, and I'll try to jump to some of them, whether it's about anything that we were talking about or opinions or anyth anything like that. I'll try to get to that here at the end of the show. Um, your circle. You have what's been given to you, right? Jesus said, I pray not for the world, but for the ones that the Father has given me out of the world. If you start, with what you have and you're able to expand out a little bit more and a little bit more and each one reach one and then we'll change the world that's really what it comes down to it's not about who's got a bigger following it's not about who's has the more deeper truth that was the thing right most people want to follow the deeper truth oh he's got the secret truth and then you get into people who is making stuff up because they're really good at telling stories and now they're fabricating stuff and they're muddying the waters because people are chasing after who has the deeper truth. And this is a bunch of weird stuff. It's not about that. The spirituality comes back to being practical, man, to really impacting the people around you. Um, man, that quote, you know, in the scriptures. And again, Jesus says, start in your hometown Jerusalem, 
Judea, Samaria, and then to the ends of the world. The world. <sighs> Here's a uh, poem I want to read. This is um, it's beautiful, and this is kind of what I slightly quoted, but I'm going to read it. It's called "I Wanted to Change the World," and this is so true, man. When I was a young man, I wanted to change the world. I found it was difficult to change the world, so I tried to change my nation. When I found I couldn't change the nation, I began to focus on my town. I couldn't change the town, and now, as an older man, I tried to change my family. Now, as an old man, I realize the only thing that I can change is myself. And suddenly, I realize that if long ago I had changed myself, I could have made an impact on my family. My family and I could have made an impact on our town. Their impact could have changed the nation. And I indeed could have changed the world. Start with the self, man. Do the inner work. Do the inner healing. I'm telling people are marching for all types of, of reasons. And, and I'm telling you, we've. I don't think that that's the way change comes. I really do believe that it's a, an inward change. A personal revival of the soul, a personal, it, it starts like a wildfire. You have your spark and you go around other people and you ignite them on fire and then they go out and they start little brush fires and it just is just consumed with the message of love, peace and understanding. Or on the other hand, consumed with the message of hatred, bitterness, intolerance, egotism consumerism, all of this kind of thing. Understand what you got. Understand your words are powerful. And you have everything you need within yourself. There's a scripture in, in the Bible where King David um, was going out and he became very successful at uh, taking out giants. His renown got known. He was known as a giant killer. And word got back that he was slaughtering all of his enemies and there was a king at the time king saul and he he helped raise david up but he began to get envious he began to get envious of king david because he heard he heard the townspeople singing a song they were shouting saul has killed thousands they were praising saul saul has killed thousands but david has killed tens of thousands and so since the people were rejoicing greater that David had killed tens of thousands and Saul only thousands he got upset he began to get envious not what, what not being thankful and grateful for what he has done what he has contributed and he actually raised up David to see the vision in him and send him out because greater things shall you do than me. Isn't that what Jesus said? You shall do greater things than me. Instead of getting behind David, hey, we did this together, man. I was faithful to the call, and now you're going out there doing great and mighty things. I've sent you out. Instead of doing that, he began to get envious, and the envy began to eat, eat him up. He tried to kill David. He tried to kill King David because he was jealous of his position and of his platform. Be content with what God has given you. Don't envy what God has given other people. Understand what he has given you. And you're going to have people around you who are envious of you. They feel like they are, they are more qualified for the position. They'll begin to speak every manner of evil against you. They'll become jealous of your platform. They're more qualified. They've been through it all. They know more, all of this. And they have all of their reasoning. Then they begin to gossip and tell people things about you and try to tear you down and try to get you to come out of your character, try to get you to gossip in your inbox maybe. There's a technology. There's two buttons you push on your phone and it screenshots. Be careful, man. Again, I always point back to Roseanne, man, one of the greatest comedians of our day, Roseanne. And in one tweet, she undid her entire career. Now she's the laughing stock. She can't get any work in Hollywood with one tweet. 
you have to be protective of the things that God has given you. And you have to understand and know who you are. There's levels and there's places that you're going that there's people with you who aren't going to be able to go with you to those next levels. They're not ready. They haven't done the inner work. You've been doing it. They're coming. They're here to ride your coattail. I'm sorry. They want to ride your coattail. They can easily do the inner work, but they won't. You want to bring them with you. You love them. You know, the scriptures talk about how when when you um, rejoice with a company, it's so much more fun because you have people to rejoice with versus having these personal victories by yourself you rejoice within yourself but when you have a company of people you guys can together and it should be that way it really should but there's people who are with you who can't go to those next levels and they're holding you down you got to let them go got to cut them off it's part of it pulling you back man gossiping slander backbiting people are envious of the call man You got to let them go. Speaking neg negativity into your life, into your atmosphere, doubting you. Nah, you're done. See ya. You know, um, so many people, so many creators, so many people who are making a difference who would tell you, I wanted to bring everybody with me. Like I pioneered some things in, in the music and in the podcast and I'm trying to make a way for my friends and they, they, they don't want to do the work. Like, I'm not doing all the way. I'm not carrying you. I'm sorry. I'll open the door, but if you don't walk through it and do the work, that's on you. And that's how you got to be. Because you'll be so consumed with what they're doing, they won't be able to, you won't be able to do what you're called to do. Understand what that is. I'm telling you, doing the inner work, going within for yourself, communing with the Father. Going into the heavens. There's nothing like it. I don't know how far out there it sounds, but it's very practical. Put on some good music, close your eyes, concentrate on your breathing, and just begin to love on God. It's really that simple. Approach it with the attitude of gratitude. Be just be begin to be thankful. I don't have nothing to be thankful for. Take that breath. You're still here. Put your hand on your chest. Feel that heartbeat. You can still claim yourself. You're here. There's time. Take that breath in. Breathe in the peace. Release. <sighs> Breathe in peace. Begin to speak to your body. Begin to prophesy over your day. Prophesy over your life. Prophesy over those friends too. Don't gossip about them. Oh, that's all they want to do is gossip. And then you become, you start doing the same thing that they're doing. Tearing tearing down destroying with your words you don't know how to build up or encourage anybody you don't have to prophesy over anyone begin to prophesy over them too you have to train yourself because we're in this in this matrix where we've been taught this to gossip to backbite to point out the bad captain obvious over here do the inner work for yourself only then will you reach those higher levels and that was beautiful how he was talking about the levels that you go through the darkness the levels in hell mirror the images of where you get to go in in the heavenly realms that's deep <laughs> that was that was good those who have been through a lot those who have done a lot of stuff the bible says those who are forgiven much love much is that natural empathy look i know what it's like i've been there there's no peace there stop worrying about what other people are saying again we're talking about politics and other teachers or whatever the case is stop being moved and swaying by the opinions of the crowd people want to know what q has to say q anon what is q saying they're ready for the new things q saying uh snowden what is snowden letting us know giving us some truth don't be concerned with what these people are saying be concerned with what god is saying do you know you could do that? That you can draw away and get alone with the creator of the universe and he will whisper in your ears and tell you things that you do not know and cannot find out. 
people caught up in conspiracy theories, gossip, backbiting, slander. That's low level stuff. You will never elevate to the higher levels. And simply do that. Get alone. God, what are you saying? Simple, y'all. Put on music. Music helps. We talked about tones and frequencies. Put that on. It helps. But just get alone. God, what are you saying? Even about the gossipers, even about the trials and the situations that just seem crazy. God, what would you say to this? Release them. And as you release them, again, you'll be elevated to higher levels. It's all about forgiveness. Holding on to stuff that was done to you 20 years ago, 10 years ago, still holding on to it. Healing the healers. That's what it's about. Learning what that is. And and for you to facilitate. People are trying to facilitate healing. And they're doing it out of a genuine place because there's a natural empathy. Right? But they haven't found that healing. They're still wounded. If you mention this one thing, there's a wound, there's a cut. If you touch it, they're going to go into a whirlwind because it hurts. It's an open wound. You got to do the healing, man. I mean, it's so many, it's so much, man. Everybody's different, you know, but at the same time, we're all so, so much alike. With the way that we act and react to situ- situations and circumstances. So that's how you learn through practical experience, through going through this stuff. You're able to tell people, look, this is what you got to do, man. This works. And the Bible says that love covers a multitude of sins. Love, walking in love, responding in love, respond to the gossipers in love. I just talked to a good friend of mine this morning. Um, he's responding to the gossipers in hatred on online. He's going back and forth typing with him. I said, bro, you, that's not what you do, man. There's no shortage of trolls. Respond in love. And respond out of anger or trying to be right. You, you know, all of that, man. Respond out of love and watch what happens. The goodness of God, man. You've received it. If you haven't received it, then then you can't give it out. So you need to go within and do the, the work yourself. Have that encounter. Have that experience. Change the world around you. Again, man. It's so deep. Spiritual, esoteric, but it comes down to being practical. Your day to day. What type of person are you? Again, Manly P. Hall says if the state of your dog isn't better if dad still kicks the dog on his way out the door then that man's spirituality or philosophy is in vain supposed to make you a better person all that man get it in again i just put out a new album it's called the esp ep there's eight songs on there um dealing with extrasensory perception tapping into some of that stuff make sure y'all check that out uh my patreon is the best way to support there's different levels of giving uh if anyone like would like to to donate financially all of that stuff is available in the description and i thank you guys for every every penny man every dime spent that that you believe in the vision that um god has given me and um and you fund that and i really believe that you uh, partake in the blessing with me i couldn't do this without you so it just lets you know that there's a collective of people who are waking waking up and um, we're about our father's business. And so thank you guys for the support. Patreon.com backslash True Seeker. Man, 250 or so, 40 episodes and counting. I'm booked out until the end of um, August right now. It'll come and go. We're going to keep doing it. till the angels come and gather us. Until something happens, we're going to keep doing it. Why? Consistency is key. If you're doing something that's working, don't change it up. Keep doing it. Because it's going to keep working. It's only going to get built bigger. It's going to snowball. Other people are going to come on board. You're going to inspire many. Do that. With that, I'm going to say peace and shalom. Love you guys. Um, I will uh, also, too, we have a form available on my website. If you go to truthseeker.com, click form at the top. There's a message board. You guys can ask questions and Talk about your UFO experiences. Talk about all that stuff on our forum. It's not like 
Facebook or anything like that where it's going to get pushed down the feed. It's always going to be there. It's going to be a thread that we can revisit. So make sure you guys check out the form on the website. It's a pretty cool feature that we have, uh, truthseeker.com. Everything's there. Um, if you'd like to check out the music, more episodes of the podcast, all that stuff, truthseeker.com. Love you guys, and we will do it again Thursday. Peace, peace. Later. You're so much higher than mine. So much higher than mine. You're so much deeper than mine. So much deeper than mine. Well, that does it for this episode, folks. To hear more episodes of the Truth Seeker podcast, head over to truthseeker.com. And if you're wanting to support the show and get rewards, go to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash truthseeker. 